Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about Meg Thee Stallion and Carl Crawford. They have gotten into it on the internet for the umpteenth time. Uh, Carl Crawford is the CEO and founder of 1501, which is the record label that Meg Thee Stallion is signed to. Now today it came out that um, the record label is countersuing her for the album that she released. Um, called, I think it's called Something for the Hotties. Yeah, something for the hotties. So they're saying that the album shoot that's not considered an album because basically it had previously recorded material, um, interludes, basically what she's talking or somebody else is talking on there. Um, so yeah. So they basically saying under her contract, the material that count as an album is considered to be um she had to have at least twelve new mastered recordings of studio performances, which means she needs 12 brand new songs. Brand new. And they cannot can they can be uh they cannot be previously unreleased songs. So oh it says and they have to be previously unreleased songs. So then it says, most importantly, 1501 says they have to approve all of the tracks, and it claims they didn't happen when Meg Thee Stallion put together her album. They also say that um, she basically did not, well, it sounded like to me she signed a 360 deal. Because um, also in the statement that was put out, it says that the label wants full accounting of what Megan made from collaborations, sponsorships, endorsements, and sign engagements because she will owe the label a cut from net revenue, which is a 360 deal, which means they get a little bit of everything. Everything that they do, that you do as an artist, they get a cut of it. Those are the deals that these uh, artists nowadays are signing, so it is what it is. It says that um, the label believes that she will owe them at least minimum of one million dollars which she probably do because if you go on her instagram you see she had deals with mcdonald's she had deals with fenty she have deals with uh some workout company and i didn't know how she had a deal with a workout company and she was eating mcdonald's on the next deal she got all kinds of endorsements so she probably do owe them a, a million or more if, if they're supposed to get a cut of that but yeah so they basically say it's not an album now, I took the liberty of looking up because I'm not, I don't listen to this modern day, like these albums and all of that. So I didn't even know this was, this even came out. Um, but I do remember that thought uh, song or whatever. But yeah, so I was like, well, let me go on here and count and see if she got 12 songs. Well, do you see the first uh, three? The first two is a freestyle, them don't count. The, the, Skid with Juicy J don't count. That fourth one is a freestyle. Fifth one is a freestyle. The sixth one, it just say piano. I don't know if she just on her playing the piano. I think so. So I'm going to say that doesn't count. The next one is a skit. That doesn't count. So we're on number eight. So we'll count eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, so that's four songs right there. Number 12 don't count because that's the interlude. Number 13, we'll count that. That make five. Number 14, we'll count that. That makes six. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, we'll count them all down to 18. They make 10. The next one is a freestyle. We're not going to count that. Thought will make 11. And the last one, I remember I clicked on that. That is a, a her just talking. So if you just go off of them numbers, that's only 11 songs and who's to say those 11 songs are brand new songs them may not be brand new songs them may be you know so either way it go if you just go on the album and you count how many songs it is it's only 11 songs only 11 so under her contract if she's supposed to have at least 12 then they technically right now when i saw this when i went back and uh counted the songs or whatever it reminded me of the live that she did um that i found on you know the internet because the internet do what the internet do and this is what she said originally i was dropping something for the hotties as something fun you know like i'm doing my freestyles i'm doing you know just some cool shit for the hotties 
And then the more and more I started like thinking about it and like adding shit to it, I was like, bitch, this really gotta be the shit because I really can't lack never, you know? So then I started having to add new shit because the shit I recorded was very, very old. <laughs> not even not the oldest thing on um something for the hotties is the bless the booth uh title freestyle that's the oldest thing on the project so i was in the middle of making two albums and once i finally figured out what i wanted to do with my album for next year like once i finally figured out the title and once i finally figured out the the theme and the way that i was going with it I was like, damn, a lot of the songs that I recorded recently do not match the theme of this album. So, therefore, the songs were so motherfucking good. I said, bitch, what I'm not about to do is just sit on these songs. Also, <laughs> also on top of that, bitch, I know I'll be going through with my label, so... <laughs> It had to meet certain requirements of what an album is. So then we had to go back in and do what needed to be done. You know? <laughs> so therefore, the album could not come at 12 because I had to add things and I had to tweak things and I had to make it perfect for the hotties. I had to make it perfect for the hotties and I had to, you know, do what the fuck I was supposed to do. So... Bitch, the motherfucking album coming. It's not coming tonight. <laughs> it's coming at like. Now, if you just listen to that video and look at this track list, you could tell that she went. That she said she was in the middle of making two albums. That means she was trying to uh, make the last two albums. She owed fifteen oh one so she can get off the get out of that contract. Now, it looked like to me she went in the studio and tried to put a whole lot of stuff together. And make it an album. Like, she just tried to throw something together, but the way she threw it together didn't work. Like, instead of doing all them freestyles, she should have just came up with, out, out of, instead of doing all these songs, where it's really not that many songs. I feel like she just put all that on there to make it look like it was a lot, because it seemed like she have a lot of talking on this uh album. She have a lot of freestyles, so... She could have just went in there, got 12 mean songs, and called it a day, and, and then got another album, did another 12 mean songs, and called it a day, and just get out her contract. Because at the end of the day, you signed a contract, you can get online and say you don't want to be signed to that man, now you won't. At the end of the day, a contract is a contract. Make them two albums and go on about your business, and that's your learning lesson to not sign a contract like that ever again. And to really read your contract, don't depend on nobody to read it. Read it for yourself. If you don't know what words mean, look it up. If you need a second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth opinion, get that. But don't just put your name on a dotted line because, you know, you really want to do something. Because at the end of the day, you know, you'll, you'll be going through things like you're going through now with her label. But, you know, mm-hmm. Because looking at that, and this is the thing about her, because she be talking so much. You go back and just like I did on the internet and pull this up, you can tell that she just threw some stuff together. So, she knew that it had to meet certain requirements because she mentioned it in this um, live that she was doing. So, hey, I guess the 1501 say it don't meet the requirements, so we suing you. So now, I guess she found, after she found out that Carl was suing her, a 1501 Entertainment was suing her, it made her mad. So she do what she do best. Instead of letting her lawyers handle what they supposed to handle, she get on the internet and go on a rant. Now she talking about first, uh, first the man over my label said I don't make him any money. Now he kind of suing trying to keep me on his label because he wants to make more money. If I ain't make you no money, why not drop me? Now, well, before I say that, and then she was just saying, let me go, and he greedy. Now, my personal opinion, I'm not going to call a man greedy. He's just a businessman. You signed a contract. He saw your potential, obviously, or maybe you didn't see your potential because if you did, you want to sign the contract like you did with him, especially get him getting a piece of all, everything that you do, your endorsements, your sponsorships, like that's crazy. No, not at all. Ain't no contract worth that. But anyway, uh, 
so she got on her um Twitter and did all that. And it's not that he want to keep her on his label. He's just trying to get what's in his contract was rightfully owed to him. Um, if you look in the contract, so mm-hmm. she then she went on to say that her lawyers asked him for expense report, which you know, um, then uh she said why a grown man put his jewelry and chains on there, Lord free me from the joke of a label. Now the thing is. Who's to say you're not paying for it? Who's to say you're not paying for it? Because I did see some where she was trying to act like 1501 did not send her that report. So obviously they did if um his his jury was on there. And I'm pretty like these people at these record labels be so scandalous. You probably are paying for his jury. Cause clearly you said in the past you didn't know what you signed. You didn't understand your contract. It's probably some fancy words in there that that basically mean you paying for his jury. You don't know because you already stated that you didn't know you didn't understand your contract. So, whoop de doo on that one. It says, I choose not to say nothing back about court and address stuff online, but I'm getting tired of being painted the bad guy 24 7 the last girl on 1501 mad at the man too now i remember that one girl came out was saying something negative but who, to each his own when y'all get into the when people get into contracts and don't read them like you can't make the public feel so bad you know because you didn't read your own contract it's really a learning lesson the other girl probably didn't read her contract either I mean, and then the thing is, I don't know why Meg getting online talking about she tired of being looked at as a bad guy. All the story said was you getting sued. Just like when you sued him, the story came out about him that you suing him. I mean, nobody painted her as a bad person when it, in this particular situation. They just said you getting sued. I mean, I don't see how that caused you to go off you know, the engine. And my thing is, I would hate to be her lawyer because she sure do a lot of stuff online that can hurt their hurt them in court. Like, literally, I would hate to be her lawyer because I know, I know that her lawyer deserves every penny she giving them and plus more because the way how hard she make it for her lawyer to do their job because she always want to get on the internet and say stuff. Now, it's cool. You can say what you want to say, but when you're taking stuff to court, it's best to just be quiet and let it play out in court because anything you use online, they're going to screenshot it and use it against you. So then she come back because she mad and she says, Carl, I don't want to be signed to your pill popping. Hey, talk, and, um, she say, you're talking about I ain't paid for a show and you sound, talking about you sound slow. I'm the artist. I don't pay you directly. Maybe fight with the man you signed to and you might see the money you effing powder head <laughs> you hiding behind jay prince now this is the thing you done got on here online now you done called and then alleged that this man do some do pills and powder like come on now this is what i'm saying when she make it hard for her lawyers to do their job because she get so emo like i don't even know like what's the point what's the point of getting online and, and defending yourself when don't nobody know the truth but you and that record label like trying to convince the public trying to convince the public to be on your side to make the public feel bad or feel pity because you didn't read your contract like just because they can go under that man comments and say what they want to say he is not about to drop you they can get under his comments and call him this, call him that, call him powderhead, call him whatever they want to call him. But he's sitting at home and you still making him money at the end of the day. So then she went on and still was talking about him, talking about he attacking her. Now, I don't understand how he's attacking her. Um, He's talking about he want to be famous, not rich. Now I can sit up here and tell you now he was already famous before her because he was in bat he was in baseball. People knew that man from baseball. Now if you're not a baseball fan, maybe you don't know him from baseball and you knew him from dating Evelyn because that's when he was like on TV and other people who don't watch baseball was introduced to him. But I don't. It's not that he want to be. Uh, I I wouldn't say that. 
uh, it's because he want to be famous. Like he he got a big following. Baseball following is huge. Alone now, if you're trying to say he want to be famous within the music industry, I don't know why, but it is what it is. I mean, he's not a rapper. I don't think he would ever be. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's trying to be like a Diddy or something like that. But he don't seem as involved like in his artist's music as in like the songs and stuff to be considered that famous. I don't know. But that's what the, that's what she said. Like I say, she make it hard for the lawyer to do their job, really. So she was just mad about that. Went on and on and on and on and on. Now, all I can say about this whole situation is read your contract. Read your contract. You can get online and do all this hooping and hollering all you want. Try to get the, the, the public on your side, the public opinion on your side. I think the more she goes on a rant online, the more people dislike her. The more people start to think she's a liar from what I'm looking at. Now, Carl did uh, get on his uh <laughs> label account or his own Instagram account and basically told her stop trying to play the victim. And um, high behind Rock Nation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's all he said. So he heard about what she said on Twitter. He went on ahead and did this because I did go look at the timestamps, and she started first. So I don't know how she think that he's attacking her when she started with him first. Now by media releasing that he's suing her, oh well, that's not attacking her. That's just putting out the facts. So I don't know why she always trying to say somebody attacking her. She did the same thing when all that stuff happened with Tory Lanez uh, and academics here recently. She tried to say they was attacking her when she the one started it. Like I'm not understanding how, how like who who what Instagram secret Instagrams and Twitters that these people have to where they start with you first because don't know you she always the person that's starting it but then say the people attacking her. I'm just still not getting it. So then after he posted that, she went back on her Twitter and was saying that people love to bring up Rock Nation and all of that. Her team is great, et cetera, et cetera. But like, okay, like nobody wants you to have a bad team. Nobody wants nothing bad for her. All, all he wants is the money he's due for that contract. And then that's it. Then she said, bye, I'm not speaking to nobody else on here. See y'all in court. She said it about every single thing. I think from the beginning, that should have been her thing. She seen it online. Oh, well, see them in court. It is what it is. The truth would always come out. But for her to get online and do all this hooping and hollering like she always do, I think it's causing people to dislike her even more. Because it, people just really don't believe her anymore. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. I just popped in to say, make sure you head on over to freedomapparel.com. I have t-shirts, protect your energy t-shirts, it's the melanin t-shirts, and my Freedom Apparel logo t-shirts, and many more. I also have fanny packs, and I also have masks to match the t-shirts. If you find anything interesting, the link will be in the description box below. So, let's get right back into the video. So after she finished her little rant, Carl went on a little mini rant and basically was saying, uh, don't believe the hype is is basically what he's saying. And he's saying he's going to sue her for defamation. And then he said she's a bona fide alcoholic who messed around with the whole industry, including her best friend's uh, boyfriend, which is Tory Lanez and Kelsey's situation. Now, I don't know how he going to be suing her for defamation of character, and he turned around and did the exact same thing. Now, I do know for defamation of character, it's things you would have to prove um, on both sides. So she probably could kind of sue for the same thing. Like, can you prove? I mean, he probably can prove his claims. Um. Uh, because there's videos on, online of her intoxicated. Um, he could just go down the list of men that she's been with in the industry. And everybody know the second one, to, the last one to be true, um, allegedly. With, you know, her sleeping with Kelsey. I mean, Tory Lanez. And he was with Kelsey first. So, you know, he probably can prove his claims. He probably checked with his lawyer before he put it out there. I'm pretty sure he did. But her claims... Can you prove that he on coke? Can you prove that he allegedly popped pills? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, she better watch what she say on um the internet though. Seriously, now she did also bring Tory Lanez into well, hmm, 
you can say she kind of brought Tory Lanez into the situation because somebody said, like I said previously, the more she going to rant on the internet, the less people actually believe her. So somebody said, at this point, Meg the Stallion is going to have to show us the bully wound or something. So I guess that made her mad. And this was in the middle of her talking about Carl, Carl too. Um, and, you know, she went on and said all this extra stuff. She's talking about her hospital records are public. If they are, I ain't seen them. I don't think I don't know if anybody's seen them. But um, she said the DA made a statement. Y'all choosing to be dumb at this point. You better hope a man never assaults you and nobody, especially women, believe you. So it is what it is. Um, like that particular tweet, she didn't even have to say nothing. Like they finna get ready to go to court. And I do notice that every time she get ready to go to court with Tory Lanez. It's always drama with 1501 right before she finna go to court with Tory Lanez. Like, every time. If you notice the same pattern over and over and over and over and over for the last couple of years. Um, then Tory got on his Twitter. He just said, protect black men. And then he said he don't care uh, what people have to say. We are black men and we matter. Don't wait until we are all lynched, lied on, and character assassinated to realize they have removed all of, all of our legends and models. Oh, and role models from the conversation. So he just put that out there because, you know, what, again, she's claiming that he allegedly could have did, done something to her and she just making it like yelling. It's like she's yelling at people like, you so dumb. You don't see I'm telling the truth. They lying. They lying. But it's like all of her stories are so inconsistent. It's so hard for people to just believe her. And, and a lot of the times because like women people believe women when it's a woman against a man it's the woman that's always gonna have the upper hand and it's the fact that she's losing the upper hand because her stories is so inconsistent and this have dragged on for so long that people have had the time to sit back and be like okay now wait a minute now what she said ain't really mm, that's not what she said the last time so i think that people are really starting to catch on to all of that and they're starting to understand, like, that girl might be lying. Now, I can say, um, <clears throat> I did say in my previous videos um, about the industry people unfollowing her. If you have not seen that, go look at it. And another one when uh, DJ Academic uh, exposed her and her and Tori Lane Island was going back and forth a couple weeks ago because that just happened too. I did say I feel like it's going to be a big old... Um, Megan, mm, I don't want to say attack, but they're going to be coming at her. I feel like here recently, every week, you know, somebody is saying something like removing them, basically removing themselves or their brand from being with her. I think that the industry may know something the public don't know just yet. And then with her getting ready to go to court, not saying that's just that court thing, but when you online all the time and you are raising a lot of drama, don't nobody want to be associated with someone. It don't matter how much butt you get on the internet and shake, how many, you know, all that, how naked you want to be. When it comes to brands, nobody wants their brands and their, you know, just themselves personally to be associated with somebody who always on the internet and drama. Literally. All the time. So I can see a lot of people... Um, starting to remove themselves from her for whatever reason, we we, we will eventually find out. But just expect it. But y'all, let me know what y'all think about this whole situation in the comments. Are y'all just as tired as um this? I am so tired of seeing Meg the Stallion in the blogs for negative reasons. Like it's either she's shaking her butt or she arguing with somebody. I just really want her to do something different. Like even when it comes to the protect black women stuff. She only bring that up when she arguing with somebody and she feel like they attacking me, they attacking me. Like, no, girl, you started it first. There was nobody even coming at you until you start coming at them. So I feel like that's another reason why Tory Lanez put up that protect black man, man stuff because she always use it to protect black women, protect black women. Like, come on, fam. You got to, at some point, she got to look in the mirror. And she got to just be quiet and let her lawyers do their job. I know that her lawyers been in the office like, come on now. Come on. Because she got always throwing out all this information that's going to be on the internet forever. People can go back and pull the stuff up and be like, this, this is what she said. <laughs>
But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think about this whole situation down in the comments. Are y'all tired of it like me or what? That's all I got to say about it and I'm out. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the journal called Unleash the Image. It's give you an opportunity to write about your day, just release everything. Um, a lot of people wear a lot of different hats, especially if you're a parent, you have different businesses, etc., etc. So I love this journal for that reason. If you like what you see, head over to Amazon, type in Unleash the Image in the search bar, and this will pop up. It's only $14.99, so get you a journal and you know relax and meditate now let's get back into the video